All right, here's number nine. Uh, for number nine, we have some function g. It's a continuous real valued function defined on the reals with the following properties. Its derivative of at zero is equal to zero. Its second derivative at negative one is a positive number. And its second derivative is less than zero anytime x is between zero and two. Okay, and you're asked which of the following could be one of the, could be part of the graph of g. So what I like to do on these to kind of keep track of things is kind of write my options up here, A, B, C, D, E, and then sort of check things off of as I go. G prime of zero equaling zero is telling me when my x coordinate is zero, the slope of my graph should be zero. In other words, this really it's the slope of the tangent line to my graph. My graph kind of gets flat when x equals zero. Note that right here, the graph is flat. Right here, the graph is flat. Right here, the graph is not flat, right? The slope of the tangent line here would be some positive number. It looks like about one. So my answer is not C. Let's cross that off. Uh, right here, it looks like my graph is flat. And right here, it looks like my graph is flat. So I have four left to consider. I don't even have to look at C anymore. G double prime of negative one is greater than zero. Okay, this is saying the second derivative, which tells me concavity, at negative one, it's supposed to be greater than zero. So my graph is concave up at negative one. Concave up, you're thinking an upside down bowl, or it's concave down, you're thinking an upside down bowl, I guess. So what I wanna do is look at these at negative one. This shape right here, does it look like a upside down bowl or a right side up bowl? Looks like a right side up bowl to me. So we're good, maybe I should be putting check marks here. There's a little check mark for A. What about B? Yeah, right here, it looks like it's part of a right side up bowl like the left side of that bowl right there. Oh well, yeah, we're good. See, I don't even care. I'm not even gonna look at it. D right here. Yep, just barely, but it still looks like I have that correct shape. It's concave up, so I'm good for D. Uh, what about E? E negative. Look at this point right here. It's an upside down bowl. It's not a right side up bowl. So I can cross out E. And I'm down to three options. The second derivative is less than zero, AKA my graph is concave down. So now I'm looking for an upside down bowl if X is between zero and two. So from here to here, do I have that proper shape? Yeah, that looks good. All right, I'm concave down. I have that upside down bowl. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, what about B from here to, nope. Right here, we get screwed up, right? I'm supposed to be concave down. Um, and from here to here, it looks like I'm concave up. So that's bad. B is not my answer. And I guess you could argue that, hey, you already found your answer, right? Isn't your answer A? You've already checked that off for all of them. Yeah, I have. That's true. Uh, but let's go and show why the rest don't work. C, I already got that it didn't work. What about D? Well, when you stare at D here, here's zero and here's two. And note that it's concave down for a while and then concave up for a while. And I'm supposed to be concave down the whole time. So right here where it's concave up, that's bad. Uh, so my answer cannot be D either. So I've eliminated all of those, left with only A. So my answer here would be A.